Today marks an extremely important moment in the AI industry where China finally overtook the US when it comes to LLM performance. Now, from the user's perspective, there's a certain point in benchmarks where the performance gap between top one and top two model becomes negligible. In other words, the practical difference between Kimi K2 thinking and GPT-5 might be minimal for most use cases. So at this stage, what really sets them apart isn't all about performance per se, but it's about other aspects like efficiency, cost, and most importantly, whether the model is open or closed. And the answer to that is a big emphatic yes. Kimi K2 is an open model that is extremely cost efficient and lightweight. Now, the gravity of this is really hard to understate because for the longest time, open models have trailed behind closed proprietary models in performance by at least about three to six months. And frontier labs like OpenAI, Anthropic, XAI, and Gemini all have been leading with a decent margin. And not only that, when you look at it from user adoption, perspective from Chinese models as opposed to the US, we're now well beyond the inflection point where more people are actually opting to use Chinese models instead of the US. So the release of Kimi K2 thinking signals a much deeper turning point in the viability of proprietary models altogether. Okay, let's actually look at the model a little bit closer. Moonshot initially released the Kimi K2 model back in July 11, 2025, and on September 5th, Moonshot released an update that improved coding performance and increased the context window from 128 to 256,000 tokens. And now, Moonshot made one more iteration to their model, and now it's equipped with thinking and more importantly, leveraging what's called interleaved reasoning. Now, there's been a lot of confusion and misunderstanding regarding what interleaved reasoning is. So let's clear that up a little bit. The concept of interleaved reasoning emerged in May 2025 as a new paradigm of reasoning. The image here from the paper juxtaposes the traditional reasoning model that produced this long chain of thought compared to an interleaved reasoning that shows a more parsed out reasoning interleaved with actual output token back and forth. Simply put, the traditional reasoning model would think everything up front and then give a final answer based on the chain of thought that the model produced. Whereas in interleaved thinking, it takes an incremental series of thinking and reasoning until it finally arrives to the final answer. And the drawback to traditional method was that one bad chain of thought sort of spoiled the entire batch that led to the wrong conclusion at times. Kind of like the scene from Princess Bride when Vinzini makes an impressive series of words to deduce which cup contains the poison. He starts spouting out long-winded theory and even traces the poison's origin from Australia and deducing further and further and, well, you know how the rest of the story goes. Now, this certainly isn't to dismiss traditional reasoning model as an inferior method because traditional reasoning was and is still part of the backbone of most reasoning models that we have now. But as agentic use cases of large language models have become more mainstream, interleaved reasoning really started to show its promise in its usefulness in agentic applications like Cloud Code or Klein to perform tasks that typically contain series of tool calls. And Kimi to Thinking supports up to 200 to 300 sequential tool calls and leverages interleaved reasoning for long running tasks. One common misconception about interleaved reasoning is this. Does the model keep its interleaved reasoning only during one turn or on multiple turns? In other words, if I ask the model to perform one task, does interleaved reasoning mean that these reasoning traces are kept for the entirety of the agentic conversation or just that one interaction alone? And this question actually points to the critical part of reasoning traces, whether they are ephemeral or persistent. In other words, does the model treat the reasoning traces as a scratch pad just temporarily or does the model use the reasoning traces to continue building upon for as long as the conversation lasts? Sheng Li made an interesting point on X by clarifying the difference between a turn and a step. Essentially, a turn is the full interaction between you and the model, whereas a step is an internal reasoning segment that the model takes within a given turn. So a conversation has many turns and a turn can have many steps. And if we go back to the original paper that introduced the concept of interleave reasoning, the template here shows that the intent is for the use cases for the model to build upon its reasoning traces for a single turn. Skylar also made a post on X clarifying this by showing how reasoning traces persist across a single turn and how it compares to other methodologies that either does all the reasoning up front before making a series of steps or dropping its reasoning traces step after step in a single turn. All this to show how interleave reasoning when implemented properly is meant to persist the reasoning traces through the entirety of that turn. 
And you might say, well, that seems like a trivial change. And to that I say, yes. So often in AI research, the simplest change actually leads to the most incredible improvements. And to add to this, while conceptually, this might seem like a simple switch, the underlying training method is also worth looking into. Because now, how we reward a good intermediary thinking needs to be adjusted. In other words, to truly reap the benefit of breaking down its reasoning into interleaved reasoning with a different format like the think tag and the answer tag, the rewarding process needs to be adjusted as well. And they found that rewarding the model at each intermediary step somewhat naively actually yields to a worse result. And that's because the model starts to farm the system by trying to maximize short-term reward for local gain rather than trying to get the final answer or gaining the global gain. So they modified the reward function to only activate on certain condition, one of which is when interleaf thinking actually leads to the final answer being more accurate. Looking back to Moonshot's Kimi K2 thinking, let's highlight some of the benchmarks here. The talk of the town is that Kimi K2 thinking is currently the best AI model available. Given that they scored 44.9% on humanity's last exam, which is notorious for its PhD level difficulty. And Kimi K2 thinking also scored the highest on the tau squared benchmark, beating every other state of the art model by a huge margin. But here's where it gets quite interesting. The model is natively released in an int4 quantized version, which means the benchmark benchmark that they reported are all done using its low bid configuration, not FP8 or FP16. And if this isn't a big show off from Kimi, then I don't know what is. Let's dig a little bit deeper to understand what this actually means. Ever since the scaling law was introduced back in early 2020, the size of the model started to grow from a few billions to now trillions in parameter, which checks out given that the Kimi K2 model is a 1 trillion parameter model. But the AI industry has also recognized how scaling the model made inference a lot harder and started to introduce clever techniques to make inference a lot more efficient. One of the ways was using Mixture of Experts or MOE, which essentially compartmentalized a model into hundreds of experts and only activating a small number of them per token, thereby making a dense model that needed all parameters to fire to a sparse model where only predetermined portions of the model activate. So even though Kimi K2 is a 1 trillion parameter model in total size, inference is going to be a lot less than that because it only activates 32 billion parameters per each token through mixture of experts architecture. Another technique is what's called quantized aware training or QAT. And QAT is another attempt in trying to reduce the compute burden when someone wants to serve the model for inference because of its obvious memory, compute, and energy demand. And combining the efficiency gain in MOE and QAT is how some people were actually able to run Kimi K2 thinking quote unquote locally by using their MacBook Pro and Mac Studio. And I say this in quotes because you'll need to spend somewhere around $13,000 in hardware costs, but just the sheer fact that we can say number one model in the world can potentially run locally seems pretty crazy. Okay, so back to QAT. When you look at the weights and activation in large language models, they're typically stored in real data type, such as 16-bit floating point precision. And while 16-bit might seem trivial in size, when we have models in the size of hundreds of billions to now a trillion parameter model like Kimi K2, things are going to start to add up. By how much you ask? Well, given a 1 trillion parameter model with a 16-bit floating point, which is 2 bytes, that will put the model at around 2 terabytes in size. And that's just counting the weights alone, not factoring other components in the architecture. So not only is Kimi K2 thinking demonstrating their capabilities by essentially beating all models in the benchmarks, but also they're beating everyone by running them on a quantized int4 version so that in theory, that should be less accurate. And the implication of Kimi K2 thinking is quite large, especially when we also factor in the cost where some sources say that the model only costs around $4.6 million to train. To try out the model, you can go to Kimi's website and check the thinking toggle on, and I'll have the link in the description for you to try.